Hello and welcome back to Doodles MD. I'm Falakia Lawal, your host, public health, internal medicine, and infectious diseases physician. This week we're going to be talking about inflammation and infections of the heart. Before we start, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned. So inflammation is the immunologic response that the body puts up in defense of the organ or the tissue to either injury or infection or some kind of damage and this involves white blood cells like we talked about those are the defense mechanism cells in the body and they flood that affected area releasing different kinds of chemicals that signal change that to bring more cells or to just cause the body to um, undergo changes that would help them to try to get rid of or fight the um, offending agent and this generally leads to like you know swelling heat which sometimes you feel like you know hotness around the area redness if it's an area that's visible to the naked eye uh, pain because of the swelling and a bunch of other things and of course um, sometimes there's loss of function and this may not be a complete loss but it might just be limited or a complete loss of function so the causes um, of inflammation generally can be due to pathogens, which could be viral, bacterial, fungal, or parasites also. Uh, next can be external injury, which could be physical and mechanical injury, like, you know, you fall um, or something, you know, blunt trauma, something fell on your leg or something poked you. It can also be chemical damage. Um, either you ingested the wrong thing, something spilled on you, or radiation right <clears throat> um, another cause is internal injury and many times this is um, probably due to autoimmune diseases where you know the body is kind of attacking itself um, risk factors you know could also vary for inflammation sometimes um, certain genetic predisposition can also make people at risk um, of having inflammation or the it lowers their threshold um, for inflammation. And then when inflammation occurs, there is a generalized, re there can be a generalized response in addition to the local response. And the generalized response, you know, people would feel things like fever, malaise, which is just general feeling unwell, um, generalized body aches, they could feel weakness, um, nausea, vomiting, and a host of other symptoms. So we're talking about the heart, right? And whenever you hear like anything, itis is describing inflammation. Um, so you can hear things like dermatitis, which is the skin inflamed, and hear nephritis, which is the kidneys inflamed, right? Um, so here um, in the heart, we've, we've tried to establish that, you know, the heart um, tends to be called something card, right? Myo, card, endocard, and things like that. So, carditis would be inflammation of the heart. Now, we've all talked. We've talked about the different layers of the heart, where we talked about the outer covering, the middle muscle layer, and the inner covering. So, you can have um, inflammation of each of the layers, or all of the layers together at the same time. And you know. All of the layers will be like a pancarditis, which is all layers of the muscle, all layers of the heart. Or you can have a pericarditis, the outside myocarditis, the most middle muscle layer, and endocarditis, which is of the inner layer. <clears throat> now, starting from the outside in, pericarditis uh, would be inflammation of the outer covering of the heart and this outer covering is in two layers there's the part that is firmly attached to the heart and then there's the other part so it's like it's like a bag right and you put your hand through um it's like you know you have a bag and you put it has two layers and you put your hand through it and attach one end to your hand and the other one is free now in between them is a fluid minimal that allows when the heart expands movement is easy gliding over when you have inflammation that easy gliding um, becomes problematic so every time the heart expands or moves it becomes an irritating thing so in pericarditis there's an inflammation of that layer 
and whenever the heart is moving people feel pain so there's chest pain all the time and that chest pain could be worse when they take a deep breath because when you take a deep breath the heart fills more with blood and expands a bit more right so you're stretching it further um, this can also progress to having fluid accumulation in that space which is called a pericardial effusion sometimes it can be minimal it can be a lot it may not affect the heart function but sometimes it can grow to a size where it balloons out and the heart does not have any space to expand into and that is called a pericardial tamponade and at that point it becomes life-threatening and something needs to, it needs to be taken the fluid needs to be taken out um, and this can be caused the most common cause is you have like infection but also it's very common in post cardiac injury so whenever something happens in the heart especially with like a heart attack um, radiation therapy it, of the heart or around the heart can cause irritation and inflammation of that layer infections we mentioned which could be viral bacterial metabolic injury or metabolic disease like uremia which is accumulation of urea that the kidney is supposed to get out so in people with kidney failure um, can happen so the next layer is the muscle layer which is myocarditis now with myocarditis this is inflammation of the muscle layer of the heart and this can be caused again by you know infections viral bacterial um, parasites it can also be caused by you know toxins um, chemicals medication autoimmune diseases and radiation and here also the muscle is not now irritated and not able to contract properly so you can have arrhythmias um, you have chest pain you have tachycardia or palpitations um, shortness of breath all the symptoms that are leaning towards heart failure can happen in this case next is endocarditis and this is the inner layer with endocarditis the most common cause is infection and this tends to be bacterial infection inflammation with autoimmune diseases can also cause it but when the 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 i guess different thing about endocarditis is that the inflammation causes like um, formation of small you know masses we call them vegetations on the heart valves which are the mobile parts um and sometimes the what we call papillary muscle that attach parts of the valve to the inner layer so that everything is not just flapping it's a controlled movement um, and these vegetations can be there sometimes they can dislodge and go with the flow of blood so depending on where that chamber is and where blood is going from it either to the lungs you have emboli embolism to the lungs so that infection that problem carries and goes into the lungs or it's um, on the left side of the heart and then it goes to all parts of the body so it can go to the brain where there can be a stroke or you can have like um, abscesses so it can just block things um, the blood vessel embolism or it can um, take infection there and cause an abscess so you can have like in the kidney in the liver um, different parts of the body and that can cause more problems um, there's also damage to the heart valves in um, these situations and many times you know, people need their heart valves um, taken care of removed or exchanged and things like that um, IV drug use is also a big and rising cause of endocarditis because um, contamination when people are injecting puts um, microbes, bacteria directly into the blood and blood goes straight to the heart. So what do we do when we have this? Obviously, you know, feeling stuff like that, you have chest pain, you're having difficulty breathing, um, not being able to catch your breath, you have exercise intolerance, you definitely want to seek help, uh, medical attention. And in the hospital, you know, would run blood work, a lot of things, imaging to be able to figure out what's going on, what part of the heart is affected. Um, and also, very importantly, is to figure out the underlying cause. Is it a viral, is it an infection, viral, bacterial, fungal, parasitic? Is it a chemical problem? Is it a metabolic problem? Is it an autoimmune problem? Many times, the first thing we do is give symptomatic relief. 
um, either try to slow down the heart, give pain medications, remove fluid and things like that. But we must take care of the cause, right? The driver of the thing that's making the heart. So that's the problem doesn't linger. So we do all of this, you know, tests, blood tests, imaging of the heart. But again, like I said, the most underlying thing is finding the, uh, the most important thing is finding the underlying cause and treating it depending on what the cause is. So that's it for this week on um, infections and inflammation of heart. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, concerns, and please remember to subscribe to our channel, like and share the video and follow us on the rest of our social media handles. I am Falakela Wao signing out on the same day. Bye.